All right, everybody, we are in our new teaching on chapter five, page 53 of your book. And our chapter is called Accessing a New Identity. Everybody say, Accessing a New Identity. All right, we're going to talk about that. And as you know, for those of you that are here for the first time, we're going to visit here at the teaching table with you for a few more minutes, about another 10 minutes. And then you're going to visit about these different uh, devotions that are in your book and, and talk about some of these things. But I want to read one scripture from page 58 on Kingdom Key, uh, Kingdom Key Day 3. And it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, for God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us so that we who did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. I want to introduce our topic from this scripture. And it says the one who did not know sin Jesus dropped business cards. No, he did not. Uh, Jesus had his identity with God in such a way that when people are around him, everybody liked being around Jesus. Are you with me? But then on the cross... He who knew no sin, all the junk that's happened in our lives, all the stuff we grew up with, all the stuff that we don't want went on to him at the cross. And it was punished, it was dealt with, and its power was removed. So that we, who were familiar with sin, sin habits, way of talking, way of behaving, that we could get rid of it and put on a new identity. How many of you have ever watched a action hero movie when the guy puts on the cape, the tights, <laughs> the cool, cool suit with the you know, emblem and all that? All of a sudden, he's got a different identity, right? But in reality, can you imagine that what we just read in the Bible, we just read in the Bible that we can actually put on a new identity. So how do we do it? I, I believe that most of our identity from our fallen world is a learned behavior. And so I'm going to visit with Pastor Sherry tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about this before we turn it over to all of you. So let's thank the Lord for Pastor Sherry and our chance to visit. So, you know, Pastor Sherry, in my experience is that I grew up in a family, and, and you know, I'll just be honest with all you guys, because we all, all grew up in family. Some of you are like, no, you, you grew up, you were Pastor Greg from St. Joseph's Hospital. <laughs> I was just a kid who grew up in Goodyear out on a farm. Are you with me? And I can look back in, in my own family tree, and, and especially the men in, from my dad and my three brothers, that uh, there was a lot of anger expressed uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't a problem to express anger. It was like everybody knew when somebody was mad. It was like, <laughs> anybody grew up in a place like that or is it just me on my farm in Goodyear? Okay, so this, so as a little kid, that became my identity. I didn't know it, but I grew up becoming angry and thinking the way you express yourself is through anger because that was the atmosphere I lived in until I got so frustrated with that way of life and I was like, I need something to change. I didn't know what I needed to change. That's when a friend told me that you need to go to church and, and hear about Jesus. 
And I remember when I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life, the Holy Spirit did stuff inside of me that was so amazing that I'm not saying like in one day I became like this totally perfect person, but on the inside, all that anger lost its power in my life. And I, I, yeah, it's all right to thank God for that. And I just realized that all these expressions of anger didn't need to constantly be going out from me. And that's how my life started changing. But now we can read in the Bible that, you know, he took all that junk onto him so that I could take his righteousness into me. And it wasn't because I read it and then I had to think about it, so now I have to do it. But there was just this amazing love of God. I felt so loved that it melted that hardness that, that I had learned all those years. And it allowed God's version of me to become more prevalent. And, I, and so when I talk about identity, I, I don't think that we all turn into clones. Uh, you know, where we all go like, I'm religious, I love God, praise God, hallelujah. You know, it's like, I, I really think that there's a God version of each and every one of us that we learned how to express probably some stuff that wasn't that great. But in Christ, we can learn to be who we're supposed to be. So, Pastor Sherry, you, you've taught a lot on this. How, in all your working with people and in our internships, what are some things that unlock people? Like I, I told you how I got unlocked. What unlocks people to find their identity in Christ? Well, I think they come to that place like you did we would refer to it to it in internship as a train wreck <laughs> and you come to the end of your foolish beliefs wow and your foolish beliefs are what the devil you know sowed into you he, he's the identity thief he came to kill steal and destroy and to take our our true identity mm. which we are made in the image of god and you know there's lots of things that keep us from stepping into our true identity. You had that, you know, talk about a big stronghold in your family of anger. And I think I even mentioned, mentioned this last week that I had a huge stronghold in my family of fear. And whatever that is, it becomes part of who I am. But then when it starts not working for you and Amen. you think there's got to be a better way, Amen. it's got to be something better. And, you know, when you, when you receive Jesus as your Savior, you, you open the door to something better. And that's why I, I love this kingdom book, because in the kingdom, you gain access to so many things. And I love being able to write on this chapter on identity because I've kind of made it my personal passion my personal process because i needed an identity change amen i would be just i don't know where i would be without the lord and without him changing my identity i i you know share different testimonies um one of them pastor lorraine um because we sort of grew up in the lord together and you know there was a point in her life where i just knew she was going to have a nervous breakdown if god didn't do something in her i'm like my friend is messed up. Now, I was messed up too, but I was looking, my friend needs help. Amen. Something has to break. Something has to give. Well, she got a revelation on Isaiah 53 that by his stripes, I am healed. And it wasn't a physical healing that she needed at that time. She already, she already had that. Mm -hmm. She needed the emotional healing yeah. of I'm accepted. I'm loved. I'm not rejected. I, you know, I want to, I want to live. I want to be happy. And I think so, so many of us, um, we've just accepted, you know, what is our, our lot in life and what, what did we grow up with? And God wants you to get you to that point where you, you see something else and you're like, I want that. Amen. So I think through internship, one of the main things we did was, you know, give testimonies and share testimonies about how God changed us and delivered us that we're teaching the class from our own foolish beliefs about ourselves. You know, um, I think in, 
in different instances that happen in your life also, um, I was about in my 20s when my parents divorced. I was married to Sam already. We had three children already. I was a very happy, uh, I had a very happy family. But when my parents divorced, it affected me so deeply because it affected my identity. And I, I didn't even realize how much it did until it was gone. Mm. And my parents were, you know, when I knew they were going to get divorced, uh, it, it was such a grief and such a loss. And many of us have those times in your life, those circumstances where who you thought you were changes. And I was, first, I, I couldn't believe that it affected me so much because I was already a wife. I was already a mother. I didn't live at home anymore. But it was that down, deep identity in me where I thought, who am I now? But as the Lord began to minister to me, he's like, I'm your father. Amen. I'm your father. I'm your father, and I want to be more your father than you ever knew how much I wanted to be your father. But now you know. Come on. That's good. And so that process of me letting God become the father to me that my dad could never be. Amen. You know, I had an image of him being this, you know, always there for me. But when it came to when he and my mom were no longer there for me, even though I was grown, my God said, I'm your father. Amen. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So all of us have those times in our life when we have to say, I need a father. I need a father. I, I need to know who I am because my own earthly parents, they're not God. They're not it. Yeah. My family's not it. I'm not great just because I'm a, a holiday or a Coger that, I, that used to be my name. I'm only great because... God is great, and he adopted me Amen. into the kingdom. Wow. Amen. I just think you should pray right now for anybody that identified with that. Can we just take a moment to pray? There's an anointing here right now. Go ahead. Jesus. <coughs> Father, we just want to receive everything that Jesus' blood bought for us. And the blood of Jesus brings us home. Mm. It gives us access to come home, to come home to you, Father, to come home to a loving Father that will never leave us and never forsake us. So, Lord, right now, if we've never truly received that identity, that I am a son, a much-loved son of God. That's who I am. I belong to God. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% in the family. Lord, right now, just let us open our hearts. If you haven't been able to open your heart fully to that, mm -hmm. just open your heart. Receive that identity that God is my father. Mm. And he will love, never leave me, never forsake me. And I can't mess it up. My behavior doesn't mess that up. Mm. If I act in the opposite way tomorrow, it doesn't mess it up. I am forever adopted. Amen. I am forever in the family. Amen. I am forever his child. And nothing can mess that up. And I receive that fully. If you receive that, just say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Amen. That's beautiful. You know, we have all these stations set up, and we're inviting everybody um, tonight, tomorrow night, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, come and pray and have God encounters. And I was visiting with one of our friends last night, and um, he, he just thanked me. He said, Pastor, I want to say thank you for making this available to us. This is the most amazing thing I've ever had. And I, I could just see that he had had a God encounter, and I asked him, I said, what happened? And he said, he shared a lot of things, but something that really kind of stands out 
to me in this that ties into tonight's teaching is that sometimes we see the block of marble, but God sees the masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And in that moment with God, he was able to quit seeing himself like a block of, of rock and start seeing himself the way God sees him. Wow. And wow. it was just really messing with him wow. in a positive way. I thought, wow, now that's identity, isn't yes, it? that is. And uh, he was just... He was just really tender and, and telling me those things. And, and I just want to encourage you that if you see yourself as a rock, yeah. God sees you as a masterpiece. And that's not just me trying to be artistic with words, but the, the written word of God says we are his workmanship. Mm -hmm. And that word workmanship literally says we are his masterpiece. Wow. And so we were talking and, you know, sometimes, could you imagine if you were watching Michelangelo work in the Sistine Chapel and you say, you know, Michelangelo, I don't think you're doing a very good job here. Uh, you know, can you put a little bit more flair over here? You know, we'd never do that, would we? How much more are we to say to God, I don't like the way you've made me. I want to be like someone else. If I could just be like so-and-so, then my life would be good. But you'll never be happy trying to be like someone else. And if you can learn to be comfortable in your own skin yes. and just respecting God, that he really knows what he's doing on how he made you and how he wants you to embrace how he made you, you'll become more content in your life. Amen. I, I used to just meditate on Psalms 139 because it talks about how God formed us and how he made us. And, you know, if you'll meditate on things in the Bible, like, you know, Kevin was doing that night, that's when the transformation happens because you're like, this, this is for me. And one of the, you know, Pastor Greg asked me, you know, in teaching internship many years and identity was a big thing that we... We taught, but you have to come to the point where you have to receive it and you don't, you get past the fact that anything you're ever going to do would, would cause you to earn it. It's already been bought by the blood of Jesus. What could you possibly do more than the blood of Jesus? And he died for you to receive it. Amen. He died for you to walk in it. He, he died for our sins but he also died for you to live Amen. in that state of your true identity, who he really made you to be. And we used to have this teaching that was called the false equation. And it goes like this, is my performance plus others' opinions equals my worth and value. Hmm. Now that's a false equation but do you know that's how we live most of the time? Well, whatever I do, however I perform, however I work, and however everybody else thinks about it, that makes me worthy. That makes me valuable. That's what we feel like. Yeah. But it's not that way in the kingdom. Jesus made you the most valuable child of God that you could ever be, and you never have to earn it. Amen. I think that's the biggest roadblock we, get, we have good. to get over is our self-sufficiency and our, and our self um, trying to do it ourselves. Learning to be a great receiver is the most mature thing that you can do mm. in your walk with God. Amen. You just have to learn to receive. Sam and I taught a message on this. It was becoming a wide receiver. I think it was during a football season thing. And I was like, you, you got to become a world-class receiver. And don't be ashamed of it. If God's got it out, say, that's mine. If God wants you to show up because he's got something here for you during this week of prayer, don't miss it. Amen. You know, this is an appointed time of God because he wants to talk to you. Amen. He, and he's here. He already showed up. He's just waiting for you. 
and don't, you don't have to get cleaned up. You don't have to get fixed up. You just come as you are. This is a, this is a free time where God said, I made the appointment. Amen. You just show up. I love no it. No cost is free. Come and receive from all of my goodness. Amen. From all of my presence. Praise God. <laughs> this is what I want to ask you guys to do. Um, you know, in, in our chapter five here, each, each day there's a devotion that uh, we hope that you've read ahead of time. And we want you to look at those devotions and, and in your discussion at the tables and to talk about some of those things. But moving beyond that, I want you guys to take some time tonight because you've been at the tables together and begin to speak words of blessing over one another and say, hey, you know, this is what I see inside of you that I, I just believe is how God made you. And to speak well of one another to one another, how many of you would be all right getting a few positive words like that, you know? We're, three of you raised your hands. That's great. And... Um, <laughs> It's because they have a hard time receiving it. So receive something from each other. Amen. And then when we get done, we want to, you know, we always close with prayer. But if you have your children here, please go get your children. You don't leave your children as orphans. Okay. <laughs> so, but then come back in and we're going to take, uh, when the class is over, we're going to take these first uh, tables out and we're going to start praying over people. And what I really want to pray tonight is for us to bless people in your identity in Christ. And just to call that forth. And we'll release those blessings over you guys tonight when the class is over. But now's your time. Enjoy it. God bless you.